Hello and welcome back to another video and in this video we'll be learning how to implement um, K nearest neighbor um, using Python and I will specifically be using scikit-learn neighbor. In our previous video we learned how to implement, uh, how we basically learned the concepts of K nearest neighbor and what is the mathematical background behind it and how basically the things are being done inside it, right? So in this video we're not going to be covering those um, those theoretical concepts if you haven't actually seen that video I would recommend you that you see that part one of this video uh, because in this video we will be not explaining much part of Kenya's neighbor but we will be implementing it right so now let's begin so the first thing we need to do is we need to import all the libraries which I've done right here as you can see that I have imported pandas which we will be using in in this um, specific tutorial for the for the pre-processing of data and then I've also imported uh, numpy which we will be using for the numerical computation of the arrays and then I have also imported um, the train test split function that I have been using in previous videos as well the, the, the basic uh, reason I've imported this function right here is, is to actually split up data in the test and the, and the training set, right? In order to actually get the maximum accuracy of the model. And then, uh, since we've actually already covered what it, uh, what it means to actually use the classification metrics in our mo for our models, I'll be, uh, this time I'll be actually using these um, classification metrics to actually um, uh, get a little uh, intuition of our data set, right? Uh, of, of our model, like how good is our model. So we will be doing that too in this in this tutorial, and then finally I've also imported um, the K nearest neighbor uh, classifier, which I will be using to actually train, and then basically we will be just you know tr uh, testing our model in the very end. And since I will be also using a data set, so this time I've decided to use a toy data set of Scikit-Learn, which is the Iris data set, and the and the basic way to do that is to just go into the data sets class and import you know there are ma many other data sets like this but I've only used the iris data set which is a flower data set which is basically you know uh, I'll actually go ahead and I'm just gonna ahead and print this data set right away the load underscore iris if I just go ahead and print this data set you see what I mean so if you see this data set you can see that there's like there are like four columns and each of these four columns have names which uh, which is also mentioned here if you if you take a look at this closely uh, these are the names. See, the feature names are sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. So these are the names of the columns. And then finally, we also have um, the classes that we need to predict. So uh, we have three classes: zero, one, and two, corresponding to Sedosa, Versicolor, and Virginia. So these are the type of flowers. So based on this data set, these are the types of flowers that we have. And let's say if I introduce a new data set like this, what's going to be the class of that? So basically, this is exactly what we need to do right here. Right, and we'll be using Kenius Neighbor to do that. So our first task is to actually go ahead and form our data set because this doesn't look like you know it's something that we can just go ahead and directly feed into our model. So we need to convert this into a proper pandas data frame. So how do we do that? First of all, we can just go ahead and say um, I can just go ahead and define the names of the columns, right? And and the names of the columns. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the names from here because it looks like it's in the form of a list. So I can just directly copy it right instead of um, typing it again so this is the names I can just go ahead and copy this control C and and we and let's just say now we need to do is we need to just go ahead and say data set equals PD which corresponds to pandas data frame and data equals data dot data which is, we're just getting the data and actually naming convention is not that good sorry for that and then we need to also assign the column names. So I'm going to say columns equals um, names, right? And if I just go ahead and print this data set right here, you can kind of get the idea that we are in, we instantly get the data set right here. But we are missing the class column, right? So we need to actually use that as well. So for this, we can just go ahead and say um, class data set dot class equals. Um, so we need to actually assign the class names. And if you look, if, if you take a look at the data. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say data dot uh, target. Well, this is how you actually go ahead and get the target from the toy data set. But just for the sake of what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna go ahead and print the data to show you guys what, what I'm doing. All right, so if you take a look at this, you can see that um, the name of this uh, list right here, or this array right here, has is target. So this is exactly what I'm doing, data dot target, right? So this is basically assigning, uh, it's creating a new column in our data set uh, with all the values of, tar of the target feeded into it. So if I now print the data set, you can see that we instantly have a beautiful looking data set that we can actually now 
you know, continue to. One thing that you must, you might have noticed in this data set is that we don't need much of a pre-processing in this data set, since they are toy data set. So they are, so they're like, you know, they're just all prepared. There's, there are no null values. We don't have to process anything in this, which uh, saves us a lot of time because we need to actually go ahead and understand what k-nearest neighbor is. So I didn't want to actually waste a lot of time in pre-processing and stuff. So I chose this data set. Now what we need to do is we need to actually divide our data set into feature set and label set. And how do we do that? Well, what we can do is we can say data set equals data uh, data set dot um, values. And then I can say x equals data set. And I'm saying that um, so this is where I'm using the slicing, right? So what I'm, I'm saying is, well, I need all the rows in the, in the feature set. I need all the rows, all the rows and these columns right except for the class so what i can say i can say from zero till four which corresponds to zero one two three and the four is exclusive so it will not be included automatically and then for the, for the y which is the which is the label set i'm saying data set um all the rows and the fourth column which is the class column and then i can just go ahead and let's just say i if i print x and let's see what happens all right so you can see that the x right here corresponds to all the values right so that that means our data set is pretty much working fine so i can just go ahead and start working on this now so the next thing we need to do is we need to train and train we need to split them into training and test set right so i can say i can say x underscore train x underscore test um y underscore train y underscore test equals and then i can use a train test split function and then in that i can just go ahead and say x comma y which you, which you just processed and the test size we can use um, about 30%. So I'm using only the 30% of the data to train. Uh, I'm using only 30% of the data to test and 70% of the data to train. Our model is going to be trained on 70% of the data. All right, so now it's time to actually create our models. So I'm just going to say model equals k neighbors classifier. And in the k neighbors classifier, you need to actually mention the number of neighbors that you need to search for, which we just looked in the previous video. The number of neighbors means that the number of neighbors it needs to compare right the distance the, the distance it needs to measure right so i need to say um num n neighbors equal this is the this is by the way the, the, the default argument you need to give and let's say i just say 40 so don't worry the 40 is not actually very absurd uh, this is normal value so if you really want a good accuracy the more number of neighbor means that you know the greater number of accuracy we have and then what i can do is i can say model dot um fit and then i need to fit the training data right so i'm going to say x train and then y underscore train right and once we have done that it initially gives us the message that our model is trained now and then what we can do is i can say predictions equals um a model dot um predict and now let's just say i i introduce some new set of values right and let's just say i give some new set of values so let's just say i give this value right here whoa uh i'm just gonna go ahead and give this value okay Control C and V, and then if I just go ahead and let's just say I let's just print this prediction, you can see that it instantly gives a zero, which I think corresponds to the Satoza. I think so. Um, we can actually go ahead and, and like you know use the label encoder to actually get the values back, or you know you can do much more greater stuff than this. You can actually print the name instead of the zero, or we can just do one thing. We can just go ahead and predict much more of them. So we can just instead of doing this I can just pass in the test data set and now it's predicting the values for that test data set right so uh, basically that's it that's exactly how you create the k nearest neighbor in Python using the scikit-learn library but uh, our original task is not to just make this model but we also need to calculate the accuracy of this model so in order to calculate the accuracy we can just go ahead and use the uh, accuracy score which is simply accuracy underscore score and we need to actually put uh, put in the the y which is the actual um, output of, of, uh, of our of our values and the, and the predictions that we just made for those values so we can just go ahead and put the predictions all right so this is exactly how you do it right and then if I just go ahead and print this score okay it says y is not defined because I've used the capital y I need the small one and you can see it's saying our accuracy is 95 percent which is a pretty good accuracy and then I can also go ahead and print the confusion matrix which we also learned about um, in our previous video in which I was um, uh, I taught you about the classification matrix right and then I will actually and it, this, this one also receives the same number of um, the same arguments so predictions 
and if I just print this out also, you can see this is the confusion matrix and the 3x3 three three matrix means that you have three output classes and each of them corresponds to, you know, so this, this right here is the actual and this right here is the predicted. So how many of it actually, it was uh, really iris setosa and it actually predicted as iris setosa and how many of them were, uh, you know, virgincia and it actually predicted them as virgincia. So you can see that our model is pretty good and there are no, um, so I think that um, our model was is working pretty fine, right? And then we, I can also just go ahead and remember I actually show the formulas related to precision recall and all the other classification metrics. We can just do that directly by using the classification report function, which uh, by the way uses the same number of arguments that I have passed on the above accuracy score and confusion matrix. And if I do that, you can see that it instantly calculates the precision recall and F1 score for each and every one of, uh, you know, for each and every label, right? So you can see that you can get the idea that this is the support count and the accuracy, micro average, weighted average, the precision score, recall score, F1 score. Each and every one of that is actually calculated right away. All right, so I think we are done with uh, calculating the, the accuracy score, but one thing we haven't actually tried is by changing the number of neighbors, right? So in this time, we are actually going to go ahead and change the number of neighbors, and let's see how, you know, how our model uh, basically changes its accuracy score based on, you know, if we, if we actually go ahead and change the number of neighbors of values one by one. Well, in order to do that, what we can do is we can just go ahead and create a for loop and let's just say I, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna test for k equals to one until uh, up to k equals 40, right? So I'm gonna say for i in range and from one till 40, right? And then, this, now basically this is the k's value, okay? I'm actually gonna go ahead and use the k value here. So I'm gonna say k, for k in range one to 40, all right? And then I'm gonna say model equals um, k neighbors classifier and then here I can say I can say um, n underscore neighbors equals uh, k, all right. And then what I can do is I can instantly fit this right here uh, model dot fit. So the training and testing data. I'm sorry. I'm going to use the training data. So train y underscore train. And then what I can say I can say well uh, prediction of i equals. So this is the prediction of. Oh, so every time I, I give a k value of k, it's gonna predict for that value of k. So I'm gonna say that, and then I'm gonna say model dot, dot um, predict. And then finally, I can just go ahead and feed in the x test. So it's gonna predict for this, on, for this k value only. And then what I can say, I, well, I can just go ahead and print uh, the number of times it predicted rightly and the number of times it did not predict rightly. So I'm gonna say, you know, just predict the, the, the average of how many times it uh, predicted rightly and how many times it not, did not predict rightly. So if the prediction is not equal to the actual value, which is y test, just, um, you know, just, just add that into an array and, you know, calculate the mean of it and then print, print that mean, okay? And then finally, what I can do is, first of all, I, I can actually go ahead and create an, er an error list, okay? and error dot append append equals um, np dot I mean actually I'm gonna go ahead and just, um, save the same thing right here so if I just go ahead and currently print this out instead of doing anything if you just do this you can see that um, for every value of k the error rate actually keeps increasing right and at some point um, there is no error and at some point there are errors right so it's basically calculating that error for us right so you can see that for the greater number of k values the error actually decreases which is a pretty good thing right but I, I can just understand a lot of things from this num from, th from these numbers so what I can do is I can just go ahead and plot a graph that um, that actually represents this okay so for, for that what I can say I can say um, VLT the figure oh, I forgot to actually import matplotlib for that so I need to import that first of all so I'm gonna say import matplotlib dot pyplot as PLT and I'm just gonna go ahead and import matplotlib first and okay we're done with that and now I need to just define the PLT's figure the figure size of our of our, of our um, graph is going to be um, 
so the, the argument for that is fix underscore size I'm sorry fix size and then we need to pass in the shape which is going to be 12 by 6 which is kind of like a rectangle right and then I'm going to say plt dot plot so we need to plot two things we need to plot the values of k and we need to plot the values of k on the x-axis and the error rate on the y-axis right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say range is going to be from 1 till 40 all right and then I need to plot error on the uh, on the y-axis and the color of that error is going to be let's say color equals um, um, red and the line style is going to be uh, dashed right so I'm gonna say dashed and then finally the marker of that uh, marker is going to be O which corresponds to the circles right and then I can say marker um, face color which is just simply the color of that circle that of this point or the values of the K so face color equals um, so I'm gonna make that blue so that we can see it and then finally what we can do is we can uh, just define the marker size of it so it's not necessary but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it right so marker underscore um, oh sorry this is actually size equals 10 okay and if I just print this out you can kind of get the idea that now we have instantly print uh, plotted this so I haven't actually mentioned the K and Y I, I'm actually gonna do that okay so that you can actually kind of get the idea right so I'm gonna say so first of all I can just do and say plot plt dot x label equals so on the x we are printing the k values so I'm gonna say k values and plt dot y label equals um, so this is the error rate right so error rate all right and if I just go ahead and say plt dot um, So if you take a look at this now, you can kind of have the clear um, visibility and you can see that as we increase the number of um, values of K, the, uh, the error rate increases and this is the point where, this is the value of the K where um, our model has the maximum accuracy. So it's about 15, which has the zero accuracy, uh, which is actually, you know, it has the minimum rate, I'm sorry for that. It's actually the minimum rate, minimum, minimum error rate. So if I just test this out right now, if I just go ahead and put the value of 15 in our nearest neighbor, let's just try that, okay? So I will do that. I will just go ahead, um, run this again, and here, instead of 40, I will just go ahead and put 15. All right, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and print the accuracy score of this. So you can get the idea that we are basically getting um, a pretty, um, pretty good um, uh, accuracy for our model right so this is basically what uh, it means to actually calculate the accuracy based on the varying number of neighbors right so I hope you actually got the idea of how the K nearest neighbor get, get basically can be implemented and how we can actually go ahead and analyze our accuracy of the model and you can do uh, you can do multiple number of things this is just one thing I've done you can actually use multiple things to improve the accuracy of k nearest neighbors you can also just not use the train test split that i have used um, you'll be you can also use the the k full cross validation instead of train test split which i will be using um, in our next videos first of all i need to uh, explain the concept of what it really means to actually divide our data into folds i will be covering that concept in our in in our further videos until then um, if you haven't liked and subscribed um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel don't forget to do that and don't forget to actually uh, click on the bell icon because, you know, in that way you'll be stay tuned for the new videos that I will be uploading. And thanks a lot for watching my video. And we will be meeting you in the next video. Thank you.